I'm gonna drop something on you guys. Coffee is an invasive species to America. It shouldn't be over here. It's a it's a very interesting plant that is it draws. Here? In America? In America? Like American continent, not the America that we know the United States. But there are some in Hawaii. Right, Kona coffee. Yeah. Okay. Kona, Kau, all that stuff. When I think of coffee though, I'm thinking Central America. I mean that's Central America, South America, Brazil being the number one producer of coffee. Yeah. Like it's an invasive species to the Americas. It was originally from Africa. And it just What do you what do you mean by that though? B- basically we brought it over here. You know, when we did the the great exchange of all the foods when we discovered the old world and the new world. And uh, basically, when it comes over here, it never grew in America and in this continent. So it grew very well because we also obviously have a great temperature climate for it. But it is also very difficult to get it, you know, going because it's not its native area. And then once it grows, it leaches out all of the nutrients from the actual soil. So it is a plant that has to be, it's, it's kind of like a double-edged sword where you, when you grow it, you have to be very good at what you're doing. Otherwise, you can cause a lot of environmental trouble. And a lot of people do use pesticides. But also, if there's no rainfall, then you're going to have to be looking into other water sources that it's causing a scar- a scarcity everywhere else in those countries. Uh, because there's no water. There's really no water. Our farm in uh, the Galapagos Island closed down. It's done. After four generations, it's gone because there's no more water coming on the Galapagos Island. So how do you view that problem? How do I view it? Yeah. Do you say this is a result of climate change? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. The weather patterns change. You know, the, the rainfall patterns have changed. Seasons have become longer. The dry season is longer. There's all these changes happening that we obviously have created and caused. And at this point, it's like, how do we make something that people don't really care for to pay that much for because they don't understand all the process and all the danger that is behind it, uh, the environmental danger. How do we change that that idea? How do we create a better dynamic learning lesson for all these people so that they understand that it's in peril? You might not be able to get a $3 coffee anymore. It might be $10. It might be $15. I'm going to go left for a second. So here's the, the trouble. This is happening in real time right now on this project I'm on. Right now in Los Angeles, uh, the farmers need more water. Mm -hmm. And there's an agreement around the water sources around how it's used. And so there's agriculture gets a percentage and then the city gets another percentage for their needs and the state and blah, blah, blah. And so this is all a negotiation that happens on an annual basis around water supply. What's happening to me in real time as a developer is I am being forced to find a way to capture water and put it back into the city, into the city's water table. Now, what does this mean specifically? This means specifically, I have to now pay for a tremendous amount of underground plumbing. I gotta pay for a pump. I gotta basically pay for a way of when it rains, which we know is rare here in LA, to capture all of it and put it back in the water table. This is a significant cost increase on the real estate side. Okay, so when I hear what you say, and I think about the Galapagos, and this is going to make it simple. I, you can look at it a few different ways. You can say climate change. Okay, cool. We all agree. But now it's a function of like, California is literally doing something. I am literally feeling the effects of California trying to capture more water. Mm-hmm. Could we say Ecuador and the Galapagos missed the boat? I don't know. Not here to argue that. But my point is like, there are things being done. And I think the ultimate problem, right? So if you really get down to like the problem... It's a water problem. Now, water today, maybe you're because you're, co- you're in the coffee business, see it as a, oh, this is interesting. This is affecting coffee. But it's actually affecting everything. It's not just coffee. Right. And so I'm just careful about that, about how we decide to say, oh, climate change, because it's, it's actually like governments can do things and it's happening to me. And I'm feeling the effects of that in real time, which is basically dollars to capture water for a problem that exists but at least there's a solution and the solution is me being you know a developer having to pay a a lot more money but there's a solution and the government is imposing that upon me in real time and so the the, the question is almost like when you think about the future is the governments the governments to some extent are part of the story too absolutely they're definitely acting too slowly and america is always a leader to some extent there's a broader story to but that's the interesting thing is it relates to water when you when you think of just you know, regardless of like what one's political views are on Israel, when you look at what Israel did with irrigation, 
and water in the middle of the desert. You have to tell everyone what they did. Look it up. <laughs> we don't have this whole time for it. Uh-huh. But just the fact that you're able to do that. I mean, there are these indoor farms in Qatar and other parts of the Middle East that are just indoor dairy farms because coffee has been exploding there. And they have no access to that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, cows can't live in Dubai. So they're having to kind of be creative in how they do that. And it's almost like, I mean, it is the political problem of like cutting through the bureaucracy of having the will to kind of do those things that are bold and not necessarily fully proven, but would be a solution. But I think also what you were saying about, you know, the the government doing something, the Southwest of America has always had this problem. We are a desert. We are not a tropical, lush landscape with palm trees, and we are not supposed to have grass in our front yards. And, you know, 25 million people living, like, you know, in Southern California, it's not really the most stable place to find population growth, right? But when you look at our farms or when you look at the coffee belt, water is supposed to be raining because it is the rainforest all the time. Water is supposed to be there. Yes and no. So I'll give you an easy example. Peru. If you go to Lima, Peru, Lima, Peru is a desert. If you go to the Andes, also in Peru, it's a rainforest. Yeah. Same country. I know. So I hear what you're saying around but like it's a California. Ridge. But like what, Cali- are they growing coffee in Lima? Of course not. Or are not. they growing in the Andes? They're not growing anything. Right. They can't exactly. grow anything. But my point is it's, it's a government thing. It's, a, it's the country of Peru stepping in and, and being able to do something. It's the country of the United States. Agreed. It has to happen on a much bigger scale than the individual. But I think it's a uh, government decision as mm-hmm. well as a corporate decision. So the sustainability of this entire industry rests upon both governments and corporations changing their practices because one hand's going to wash the other and eventually help everyone out as well. Is this a water documentary? Is that what this is? It's, it's is essentially that? changing into a, a climate show, an argument for why we should give a shit about climate change if you don't already. Essentially, this becomes a story of how your purchasing power affects the global economy and how it is your most powerful voice right. for how you can impact global change. Right. Wait, so that's interesting. And so to some extent, you you repurpose money, right? You awaken consciousness to repurpose dollars. Purposeful purchases. That's fascinating. I mean, no one thinks, we don't put it out there, but whenever you're purchasing from us, it's not just the money that's going to the farmer. Like we have do- adopted so many animals in Costa Rica and released them into the wild from the purchases that people make. And we have protected acres in, in Brazil from the Amazon rainforest. And, you know, those are things that we do, that we feel that it's our duty. 